This is a right one service. It begins on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand. <coughs> And listen to these words from Isaiah. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Many people shall now beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to that life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Won't you please be seated for our readings? <coughs> reading from Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning books. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 122 responsibly from whole verse. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Now our feet are people standing within your gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself. To which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of our, the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. A reading from Romans. You know what time it is. How is it now the moment for you to wake from sleep? But salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the arm of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and 
make no provision with the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep away therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. And therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, you please be seated. <clears throat> so the Isaiah reading says, Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn about war anymore. This mighty vision of Isaiah is so, so powerful. And as yet, to be fulfilled. Israel has never had a time when there wasn't violence in their life, in their daily lives. It is a part of their reality all the time, even today. She's this tiny nation that's located on a trade route, and everybody wanted it. Everybody wanted to have it and take it over. And so they were always at war. And during Isaiah's time, lifetime, the Assyrians had come down, swooped down, into Israel, the northern kingdom, and had taken away 10 of the 12 tribes. And they completely disappeared off the face of the earth. We can't find any remnant of where they went to. But they were gone, completely gone. And then the southern kingdom only had two, you know, two tribes left. And that was what they had to survive on. They were never heard from again, those northern ones. And so while this was all going on, there were still those a few, like Isaiah, who envisioned a different reality, who envisioned something else happening. Life doesn't have to be this way, he said. Visionaries who could see that the ongoing darkness was that time of peace would someday sweep over them and a time of kindness. They dreamed of a time when God would enter the world and bring an end to war, and an end to suffering. They dreamed of a time when God would establish God's reign on earth and everybody would be acting the way they were created to be in the first place. They dreamed of a time when the division that had torn people apart even within their own nations would end and people would start seeing each other and not being divided but being as one. <laughs> a nice vision. They would be healed and they would be people under the authority of God. They dreamed of a time when nations shall not lift up sword against nations, neither shall they learn war anymore. And if we're honest, the dream continues. It is still a future <coughs> outcome. There are still dictators, there's still oppression, there is still war. Isaiah's vision is seen as his prediction of something far off in the future. Sometime when that new Jerusalem will fix everything. 
But maybe, just maybe, as you watch TV, you can see that the violence humanity still inflicts on each other, you know, in between nations, in our churches, synagogues, our mosques, in our schools, our nightclubs and Walmarts, has still continued, and it feels like it's just getting worse. And I wonder if waiting on God to do all this heavy lifting is what God had intended in the first place. I know we're talking about God, but what do you think about the idea that maybe we have depended a little too much on God's hand to transform our swords while we're still out there swinging them against each other? What do you think? What do you think? So uh, maybe God's hand in peace and this is radical, I understand, but maybe it's God's hand in peace is supposed to be our hand. Maybe that's what it was meant to. This reading of Isaiah's anticipation of peace was written 700 years before Christ was born. And 700 years later, the living incarnation of peace came, this innocent baby, to help us light the way on how it was supposed to be God's hand. So yearly, we pull it out, dust off this reading, of prayer and hope, and we dare to dream again. We dream the dream that God will bring wholeness. All the while, we continue to hammer our swords and to sharpen them against each other. Jesus came and lived by the fact that the flame of peace is something that we're not supposed to be looking for in the horizon all the time. Looking for God coming. Is God coming yet? But to have a hand in bringing that all about. But what can we do? What can we do as individuals? I'm telling you, there's something you can do. And you can start today, if you've never tried this before. Long, long ago, there was a wise and ancient rabbi. And as normal in the rabbi system of teaching and learning, he would teach by asking questions. And so the question he asked this day is he said, how can a person know when darkness is ending? And when the day is going to begin. Now, let's see, a student sit there and they think about it and they think about it. One says, well, how about when there's enough light so off in the distance you can tell if an animal is a sheep or a goat? Hmm. And another one says, well, how about if there's enough light that you can see a tree off in the distance and know if it's a fig or if it's an oak? And the wise rabbi said, I want you to open your ears and I want you to hear me. Darkness ends when you can look at any other person's face, any other person's face, and recognize that that person is your brother or sister. If you cannot recognize that every face you see is your brother or your sister, then darkness has not lifted and light has not come. To be God's hand doesn't always mean to do the heavy lifting. It doesn't always mean that. To bring Isaiah's vision and Jesus' teaching alive doesn't always mean heavy lifting. But it does mean that each of us has got to intentionally begin to see by looking through God's eyes and see every face you see as your brother or your sister. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nazi Creed, beginning on page 326 of the Book of God. We believe in the Lord God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe Christ, the only Son of God, eternal to God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, He became part of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He had 
Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. 
and strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace. Stay. <coughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
our service will continue on page 340 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord.
Christ our Passover sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep peace. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this side table of a merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so that we can pledge that of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may be ever more found in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, we take them in response that we love him and that we will always follow him. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Christ our Lord. 
world without end. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain in you always. Amen. <laughs>